Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. It's so wonderful to see us all in God's house today. It's really good looking from up here down there, seeing the smiling faces. It makes us feel better. So if you're not smiling, please put a smile on now so that we won't feel shy. <laughs> First Peter 1, verses 8 and 19 says, For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversations, received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Our first song is, There is Power in the Blood. many as are the promises of God, in him they are yes. Therefore, also through him is or amen to the glory of God through us. Our next song is Standing on the Promises. Oh uh -huh. 
1 Thessalonians 4, verses 17 says, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Or last song, When We All Get to Heaven. Preparation, we sing the Lord is in his holy temple, hymn number six nine two. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Hymn number 694.
Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we can come here on your Sabbath day. Send your spirit to be here among us. And when the day is over, may we say it has been good to be with the Lord. And may all that we think and may all that we do be in accordance with thy will is our prayer this day and always until you come. In Jesus' name, amen. Please remain standing for opening hymn of praise. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Hymn number 12. Joyful, joyful. and girls how are you you're good I just heard one person say good how's everyone doing good that's what we want to hear I always like your outfits <laughs> today we're gonna hear a story about sand rock and builders you kind of have an idea what that is already right no Jesus was telling a story to explain what it meant to obey him. 
he explained that when we hear his words and do what they say, we are like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. An example of hearing God's words and doing what they say is like hearing in Sabbath school that we need to love your neighbor like we love ourselves. We always hear that, right? What does that mean, love your neighbors like yourself? It means that you would do to your neighbors the same things you would do to yourself. You'd be kind, you'd be patient, you'd be gentle. You wouldn't hurt yourself, right? So we need to love our neighbors like we love ourselves. What happens if you heard that in Sabbath school and then the next day you notice that one of the kids at school is crying and upset on the playground and kids, the other kids, were laughing and making fun of them? That wouldn't be good, would it? Instead of joining in, you go over and comfort them and play with them. You do exactly what you learned, right? Do unto others as you would have done unto yourself. When you obey what you learn in the Bible, God calls you wise. To be wise or have wisdom is not how smart we are, but more what we do that's important. When we obey God and listen to him, that makes us wise. Of course, being wise is a gift from God, and we can ask for it by prayer. Jesus said that the wise man built his house on the rock. When the rain came down and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against the house, it didn't fall down. Why? Because it was bring, built on a rock. It was nice and strong. The people that hear God's word and don't practice them are like a foolish man who builds his house on the sand. So if you learn to love your neighbor as yourself and you didn't do anything to help the kid that was being made fun of on the playground, God calls you foolish. What do you think happened to the house that was built on the sand? Think about a sand castle. What happens when you build a sand castle at the beach? Right. It doesn't take much. It's not very strong, is it? And knock it down. Or if the wind blows, it knocks it down too, right? When you build a sand castle, is the sand castle strong? No. What would happen if it rained or a big wind came? It would knock down. It wouldn't, wouldn't be very stable at all. Just like a sand castle, a house can't be built on sand as it will come crashing down. We know that God is the maker of everything. We do know that, right? Everything. He made us and knows what's best for us. So if he gives us good choices to follow in the Bible and gives us those rules, they are not meant to hurt us, but they're meant to help us. God doesn't want to boss us around. He loves us and wants the best for us. He wants us to listen to what he says in the Bible and obey. So let me ask you this. Would you rather be wise or foolish? And if you live your life on listening and obeying to God, you are wise and you will become strong. So when trouble comes in your lives, you will have the strength of God to see you through. Is that true? That's why it's so important to listen to his word, be wise, make wise choices, listen to mom and dad, listen to the elders as they speak to you and give you wise advice, right? Who uh, would like to pray today? Two? Okay, all right. Lord, um, thank you for this day, and um, don't, and let us be safe, and amen. Amen. Um, Lord, Thank you for everything you did for us today, and thanks for, for this wonderful children story, and let us have a good day. Amen. Amen. Wonderful play. Do you want to pray as well? No? Okay. All right, kids, go back to your seats now. Thank you again.
morning again. It's now time for our, our family prayer. And, you know, every, every Sabbath we have names listed in our, our prayer bulletin. And, and we all have uh, unspoken prayers. And uh, we were blessed this past Sabbath. Uh, last week we took the adventurers and we took them to Glen Cove Nursing Home. And they were able to provide a blessing and receive a blessing by uh, singing to the folks there. And uh, Lois was a, uh, a resident there. And a lot of you know Lois. Uh, she was on the first floor. And uh, Jessica asked uh, <clears throat> myself and uh, <clears throat> Elder Wyatt to go ahead and see if we can get her. We went to her room. They were singing on the second floor. Uh, she was in a wheelchair, but she wouldn't let us push her. She, she did it herself, and we were waiting for the elevators. And what was so amazing, every one she came across, the staff, she was so proud to have us there. She was so proud to hear the kids sing. And she introduced, she said, these are my church members, and they're here to pray for me, and the kids are here to sing for us. And she did that to about five different staff members there. Remember, we got her from the first floor, taking her to the second floor, just waiting with elevators. Walked into the second floor area where the kids were singing, and they were just, uh, they were singing, and she was still just lit up. This is my church family. They came to sing for me, and they came to pray for me. So after we took her back uh, uh, down to her room, and we spent some time, uh, Wyatt and myself, and uh, we prayed uh, with her. And, uh, and just, it was, a, it was a humbling experience for us just because we realized no matter what stage we are in life, whether youth coming up, uh, infancy, or uh, towards the latter part of our lives, we can all use prayers. We're always, all of us are going through something and prayer is so powerful, but she was so proud of her church and so proud of what a praying family could do. So uh, as we, we have these names in our, in our bulletin, and we have a number of, of uh, folks that are not listed in the bulletin. Uh, I mentioned earlier we, we spoke about uh, the Munson family, just praying for the challenges they're going through right now. And a lot of times, uh, you know, we don't have the words uh, to, for comfort, but the Lord, the Lord provides everything they need at that time. His timing is perfect. And so we just ask you to please keep the, uh, those families in prayer. Uh, there is uh, uh, Bob, and if I'm not mistaken, Bob reached out to us uh, and just asked for prayer. He heard we were a praying church. Uh, we have a group of believers here that uh, have strong faith, and uh, we take everything, challenges uh, that we have to the Lord in prayer. So just keep Bob. He's going through some health challenges, and and uh, and uh, just keep him in mind as well. Um, <clears throat> uh, Daddy Biff, a lot of you know Daddy Biff. Daddy Biff has a uh, a friend he served with uh, in the military years ago, and that fit, uh, uh, friend is riddled with cancer right now. But more concerning is that uh, he does not have a relationship with the Lord. So for the past few weeks, and uh, uh, that I've become aware of it, uh, uh, Daddy Biff uh, has been praying, and I've been praying for that. Uh, gentleman, he called me last night, Daddy Biff. I, I didn't get to receive the call, left a message, and saying that the Lord is working in great ways with uh, his friend Tim. Uh, Tim doesn't reside locally, and uh, it, it's just a troubling to his heart that he would not have a relationship. But you know, as we said, the Lord goes ahead, and the Lord is powerful in so many ways that we can't fathom. So, uh, all these things, again, just uh, just keep in mind as uh, uh, we go to uh, the Lord in prayer. If you can, just please go to your knees, and uh, let's uh, take all these and uh, all our cares and concerns to the Lord.
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day you've blessed us with. Lord, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the privilege of being able to come into your house this morning and kneel before you and cast all our cares, our burdens, our concerns, our worries at your feet. Dear Heavenly Father, you are a wonderful God. Thank you for loving us and caring for us. Lord, you've heard the names that we have mentioned this morning. You know the names that are in our prayer bulletins. You know the prayers, the names that are in the hearts of the unspoken requests. Lord, you, you know it all. You know it all. You know the hurt, the pain, discomfort that many are going through. Lord, we ask for you to come in a powerful way, Lord, and give each and every one, each and every individual, each and every family, Lord, that may be experiencing challenges, some more serious than others, but challenges nonetheless to them, Lord. We ask that you come in in a powerful way, Lord, and give them everything that's needed. Give them your peace, Lord, your comfort, your love, your direction, Lord. Lord, I pray also, even more importantly, that we don't wait until times of desperation, times when we're down and out, times when our health is failing us, Lord. I pray that each and every one of us, Lord, each and every one of us yearns to have a stronger relationship with you each and every day, Lord. Lord, we say it again, you are a wonderful God, and we appreciate all the blessings you've bestowed up in our lives, Lord. Please help us to continue to be faithful, Lord, and recommit ourselves to you each and every day, Lord, so that you can continue to work in a powerful way in our lives, Lord. Lord, I ask for your blessing on our church, our church family, Lord. I thank you for using the church and the family, Lord, in strong ways within our community, Lord. I ask for your blessing on the leadership of this church, Lord, that this should, uh, uh, decisions will be made, Lord, that will glorify you, Lord, and help to further your kingdom, Lord. I ask you to be with the pastor and Becky as they are traveling right now, Lord. I ask you to be with the Munson family, Lord, as they are in need of comfort, Lord. I ask you to be with all those that we have mentioned before, Lord, as well as those that we may not remember at this moment, Lord. And Lord, once again, we just thank you for being who you are. We thank you for loving us, being patient and kind and understanding with us. We praise your name, Lord. We ask all these things in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Scripture reading comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. I'll give you a moment to find it if you haven't. Chapter 28, verse 18 through 20. It says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded to you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. I've been in the company of some of the greatest singers in Adventist present history. And that's well and good. Uh, I mean, you can have mighty orchestras that play real good music, and you have some folks that can sing mediocre music. But when a little child gets up and sings, I think it brings heaven down, doesn't it? Thank you, Faith, for that song today. Really appreciated it.
Do you know him? The Lord who made the sun, moon, and stars. He loves you. He wants to know you just the way you are. You are his love song. He wants to sing sweet music in your ear. He's always near. He is the glory that comes down to fill your soul. Can you see him in the vivid colors of the morning sunrise? The heavens in all their glory should bring a tear of joy to your eyes. The knowledge that there's someone higher than the sky to bring a peace and a solace and a warmth deep inside he became the crucified to save your precious life can you see him do you know him Jesus is the answer to the loneliness and pain that lives within. When he hung upon the cross to pay the bitter cost for a world lost in darkness and sin, you have a friend in Jesus. Do you know him? Will you serve him? Will you follow in the footsteps of his passion? Will you trust him and his promise of a life everlasting? Do you pine to see his face, his smile full of grace? Is there a longing that burns in your heart? When all is said and done, do you hear what I'm asking? Do you know him? Do you know him? Jesus is the answer to the loneliness and pain that lives within. He hung upon the cross to pay the bitter cost for a world lost in darkness and sin. You have a friend in Jesus. Do you know him? Do you know him?